Welcome to Lawmen, a podcast about local legends and obscure curiosities from days of yore. I'm James Shakeshaft. And I'm Alastair Beckett-King. And before we get into this episode, I have to make a correction and apology. Last week we were talking about potatoes and tomatoes. I recall. And I said they were from the Mandrake family. Turns out, however, they're from the Nightshade family. Oh, the other superhero. Yeah, the superhero that, to be honest, should be half man, half lamp. What story have you got for us this week with its manifold inaccuracies? This has been sent in by a listener and, oh, there's a lot of ghosts in it. Prepare to be scared. Okay, I'll do that now. Oh, good. Well, let's start it then. So have you got a story for me there in your little pouch? Uh, Yeah, I do in my little pouch, in my little... Are you visualising a leather pouch? Or one that's part of your body, like a marsupial. Yeah, I was. A, it was a marsupial pouch. A marsupial. That's disgusting. I was hoping. I was hoping it was just a little satchel. It's a sort of inside-out sort of um, mucky fold. Mucky flesh envelope. It's my mucky fold. <laughs> Well, what have you got in your mucky fold for <laughs> yeah. me today? I don't think we can put this in a podcast. I. I don't think I can say that. Um, um, well, this is. I've got an email. I've got email. I've got Wi-Fi in there now. We got an email um, from a listener. I presume they're a listener. It would be very odd if they just emailed us a folklore story on the spec, not even knowing what we did. But it's Emily O'Shea, and she sent us a nice little tip-off about a localish legend to me, a Cotswoldian one. And I did a bit of research on it, and it's really good. Oh, great. So I would like to tell it to you, please. I hope you haven't got her into trouble by naming her as the snitch who gave us the tip-off. And, like, the, the ghost or whatever is going to... Oh, yeah. You know, seek her out and, and seek revenge. Oh, yeah, that's a very good point. She didn't say that she she wanted her identity to be protected uh, in this world or the next. <laughs> well, we, we should just keep an eye out, because the last thing we want to do is send our listeners down the road of supernatural vengeance. Yeah, email in if you're continuing to not be haunted, please. Regular <laughs> updates, thanks. Cheers, Emily. This is the story of John Crump Dutton. John Crump Dutton. John Crump Dutton. Crump is sort of affectionate nickname that was given to him because he had kyphosis or hunchback. Oh. Which is the derogatory term. Oh. Yeah. Right, an affectionate nickname, mocking a disability. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. But he may he there's a there's a real chance he's a murderer. So Oh, fair enough. Normally I don't like to have a pop at people, but if they're murderers I don't know. That it gets a bit. No, well, because I was thinking area, it was getting it? a bit ableist, but I actually appreciate the message that disabled people can be murderers too. So watch out. Yeah, that's not especially <laughs> yeah. the normal amount. I did look it up as well to make sure I was using the right word, and it's also known as oh, Schuerman Schuerman's disease. Right, which is when it's named after a doctor. S C H E U E R M A N N. Sure, 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 man. And that reminded me of um, a couple of episodes ago. We took I brought up Schrodinger's cat. Oh yes, and we we debated how to pronounce Schrodinger. Yeah, because I for some reason I don't know why I thought it was Schrodinger. It's not obviously. I did Google what Schrodinger was, and the first ten responses for Schrodinger is a funeral home in America, and that made me think if other people have made that mistake. <laughs> I don't know. Just the the level of uncertainty people must feel yeah. in Schrodinger's funeral home. Or maybe you do it as a sort of a hope, and maybe it'll bring him back. I'm afraid she's dead. Or is she? Mm, I will need to observe that. Schrodinger's coffins. <laughs> and also that, and then that reminded me again about Pavlov's dogs, because I always think of Schrodinger's cats and Pavlov's dogs. What would happen if they were to meet up? Um, and <laughs> they just have, they'd have stuff in common that they could talk about, yeah, I imagine. Yes. But also, it reminded me that I think my wife's going to be annoyed for mentioning this on the podcast. But for a bit, my wife thought that Pavlov's dogs were those ones um, playing snooker in the painting. <laughs> so, anyway. They must have 
done something on the downtime. I've got a, I've got a winning hand. That was a dog. <laughs> it was a dog saying, I've got a winning hand. But it, would they call it a paw? Mm. I'm being very discriminatory. Let's get back to talking about the guy with the hilarious nickname. Old Crump. Mr. Crump. Also, crumping is, as you, as you know, as well as I do, crumping is uh, an, a very expressive form of hip-hop dance. Yep. Yep. I don't need to tell you any more about it. You know all about it's it. It's unnecessary. It's unnecessary to ask me to go into any detail. Yeah. It's understood that I know. This was a, came at a very fortuitous time for me because I've been casting around trying to find a really good haunted house bit of folklore. And this one actually takes place over two houses. So we've got two haunted houses in this. Okay. The neighbouring villages of Oldsworth and Sherborne. Um, these are in Gloucestershire, kind of near North Leach. Oh, oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Have we talked about the origin of the name Sherburn before? No, I don't know. There are Sherburns all over the country. Because there is one in the Palatinate County of Durham. Uh, hey, where I grew up, yeah. Sherburn was the next village over. Is it? Where everyone was really rough and scary. We were like, um, oh, you, you reckon you're a bad lad? Well, you're not as bad as, like, a Sherburn lad, because, um, like, they smoke. Do they? Was, um, what it was like when I was at school. Yeah, they would, like, they would smoke and um, be generally rougher than we were. The equivalent of the Barton lads, then. What are the Barton lads? Well, they're people from Middle Barton. Is, sorry, is that a specific reference to your school? Yes. Right. <laughs> it was some universal measure, the Barton lads. Yeah, exactly. I mean, now that we look back, this is this is classism expressed through children, so I don't feel so great about it. Oh, uh, yeah, that's bad. But the origin of the name Sherbin, and the reason there are lots of them, is it's a balderization of... Well, I can't say it on the podcast because it's going to be bleeped. Oh. But it's burn. Oh. People, listeners will just have to guess what the bleeped part of burn is. But it means the toilet stream, the stream that people used to carry out their daily business. Oh. That's, that's what the name comes from. Oh, burn as in like a Burn like as a in a burn, a stream. Right. And that wasn't considered offensive until... Yeah, probably Victorians or you know later on people thought well we can't be writing that on maps and so the name has to be cleaned up but that's why there's one in lots of different areas because it's named after the the burn. Wow. Good little factoid there. That is a brilliant factoid. Whenever I bring a fact onto the podcast I always have to check it afterwards during the edit to see if it's true but I, I think I'm on safe ground. <laughs> Are you sure that's not a, another bit of bullying for your Sherburn neighbours? Just a diss. It's where Sherbert came from. Leave us alone. <laughs> Which was originally Bird. <laughs> but dib dab. <laughs> <laughs> Which is also a form of hip hop dancing. <laughs> but anyway, there's two villages. Well, I had I did actually find some stuff about your Sherburn. Oh yeah. There's a bit of bee based folklore up in uh, your Sherburn. A bit of bee based folklore. A bit of bee based folklore. Yes, you probably know being down the um down the road from it. Uh, no, I've n- I've never heard any bee based folklore. The first bit of bee based folklore is there. There was a man, a poor man, who had a beehive. But one day his swarm settled in a rich man's garden. This sounds like it's going to be like a, a one of them fables or something. It's not. Oh, right. So it settled in this rich man's garden. Probably in Belmont there, where I was from. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, it's probably flown over the scrambles from Sherburn to Belmont, just to contextualise. Over the scrambles? The scrambles is the bit of rough ground in between the two towns where all wow. of the clashes occurred. Did you grow up on the Eastern Front? <laughs> Well, all right, so they might have gone over the scrambles. So the bees settled in this rich man's garden, and he was like, they're my bees now, mate. I'm having them. If the bees want to be in this rich man's garden, then who am I to stop them? And which is what I imagine the plot of Indecent Proposal is. (laughs) But with more bees, obviously. Um, The poor man went over and said, in essence, bees, show me where you really want to live. And they all settled on his face on his beard and he walked them back home (laughs) as a beard of bees he got his bees back that's the bee-based folklore (laughs) you're right there's absolutely no lesson in that no i was really looking for an aesop like moral there was a couple of other bee things do you remember in our christmas episode where i said about um bees around my way were apparently 
would buzz and dance on uh, Christmas Eve. That is also uh, a myth up round your way, mm. it turns out. I probably mentioned it in the Christmas episode and have forgotten, but it used to be traditional to give bees the news when important things would happen. Yes, I, that's that's reasonably local to just your area. It There's is. a few other places around, not just Durham, but it is in Durham. I thought it was universal. There was a tradition of telling the bees. Yeah, if someone died or something, you'd have to go and tell the bees. That's, that's the worst part of it sometimes, isn't it? Mm. When you have to tell the bees. From the sound of things around your way, it'd be like, oh, how are bees? <laughs> Or or Jeff's been smoking again. (laughs) Is that specifically Jeff from Biker Grove? Oh, no, it wasn't. It's one of the only names I can say (laughs) with any confidence that is a real name, aside from PJ. (laughs) The bad news is, he can he see? (laughs) No, you've got to give up the cigarettes, man. Anyway, this is presumably the bee now talking to Noddy. (laughs) And the final bit of bee-based folklore for Sherbourne is in around the 17th century, there was a story of a woman who had a hive and sick bees. And that's in a bad way they were sick. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for clarifying. And so what she did is she put a consecrated host in the hive. And that's the communion wafer, if you didn't. I had to look that up. I was visualising a compare. (laughs) Just like an MC. A vicar, though. Yeah. (laughs) So, uh, we got anyone in from... uh, You're all bees. You're you're bees. I don't need to tell you uh, the news. (laughs) (laughs) So, who's single? And it would be all the worker bees, because they're they're infertile. Oh, yeah. Oh, that would be a tough gig. So, so all of you are with her? Yeah. (laughs) That's, That's a lot of banter to be had there. But, yeah, so she put this in, and the bees got better, and... When she went to collect the honey a few months later, she opened up to the hive and found that the bees had built a little bee chapel out of wax around the wafer. Mm. Complete with doors, windows, and a little steeple with bells in. No. <laughs> no, no, that didn't happen. I think that didn't happen, James. You don't think the bees made a little wax church? <laughs> complete with windows doors and bells you can't make a working bell out of wax it won't clang no it would make a sound at best it would no, the clapper would just you'd get to try try it once and the clapper would stick it's nonsense that's a shame because i like that old lady i was warming to her and uh and then it turned out she was just a liar <laughs> she had sick bees man oh you got some sick bees there missus uh, bees will whack oh it's your hip-hop background isn't it yeah i'm just just trying to keep the podcast relevant yep so yep. th- that is not the Sherburne we're talking about. No. The Sherburne we're talking about is in Gloucestershire. Of course. And it is the home, unsurprisingly, to Sherbourne House. And this is where the Duttons lived. And their estate was so big that their hunting lodge was in a different village. Oh. The village of Oldsworth. And these are the two haunted houses. We're going to be talking about Sherbourne House and the hunting lodge. And the person that... I th- I'm not sure if he built the house, but he definitely built the hunting lodge, or had it built, was John Crump Dutton. Until you realise that Crump is a horrible nickname for a disability, it does f- sound like a very fun word, doesn't it? Yes. Yes, it does. You know, have you heard of the cronut? Yes, of course I'm aware of the cronut, James. It's a cross between a cruller and a donut, right? And it's a donut made out of croissant. Oh, well, I've made a fool of myself then, because I thought it was a cruller. What's a cruller? It's a cross between, uh, I have no idea, a cruller is an American thing, isn't it? It's like it's like a bumpy donut. Is it? I don't know. I've never had one. I'm a vegan who lives in England. <laughs> well, yeah, all I knew was a cronut um, was, uh, yeah, it was a donut made out of croissant dough. Mm. And if you follow that name and convention through, then a crump would be a trump made out of croissant dough. <laughs> <laughs> but they already have that one, and it's it's called Donald Trump. Um, that was my satire for the day. Very good. You're welcome. I spotted it. Um, you're, do- you're doing a one bit of satire yep, per episode at the moment. Yep. That's the, that's the it's erasure. a shame there's nothing going on in the news to talk about. <laughs> right, so this guy, he was an MP, old Crump Dutton, uh, around the time of the Civil War. And do you remember John Hamden from the Devil and Jeremiah Stone episode? Yes, I do. He, he was a thief. He wasn't a thief. All right, you royalist. He was the one. He was the one who helped spark the Civil War. Oh yes, this is very much indicative of your cavalier attitude. <laughs> <laughs> one of the main things that sparked it was King Charles I asked for ship money, and ship money was a tax that that the the monarch could call upon in times of war from people on the coast to basically say, "We need a navy." 
and it's in your best interest you give me money to make that navy because otherwise you're going to get invaded. Yeah. Charles I tried to collect ship money from everyone when there wasn't a war on. And that is what kind of helped spark the Civil War because lots of people refused to pay it because, like, John Hamden and old Crump, they're, like, massively in land. And they're like, we don't have to pay this tax. This is not, this is not our tax to pay. Right, so it was, it was his poll tax. I don't know what the poll tax was. Was that usually only places that had poles? <laughs> yeah, barber shops, pole vaulters. We've got a maple. We get it out once a year. Leave us alone, maggot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he similarly refused to pay, and he was jailed for it. Hamden was. Uh, no, um, Crump, Dutton. I, I beg your pardon. He was jailed for it. But then during the Civil War, he kind of played both sides off against each other. He supported both sides until he saw which way it was going. Apparently, due to this, a curse was laid in Parliament on him. That's in quote. That's what laid in Parliament is the quote. Wow. Um, that his family would die out in the 20th century. Mm. And in 1986, Juliet Dutton, an elderly spinster, died without child, and she was the last in the Dutton line. Wow, that's in- incredible. But also, what a ridiculous curse. That's like That gives him plenty of time in hand. But also, in Parliament. <laughs> yeah, it's really uh, inappropriate. In a couple hundred years, that's it for your lot. I think I'd be fine with that. Yeah? Yeah. Who cares? In 2200, there's not going to be any more Alistair Beckett, any more Beckett. I've forgotten how um, (laughs) families work. (laughs) I thought you were being cloned there. Now, going back to John, he was married a couple of times to quite rich women. And the rumour was that he'd done done away with them and buried buried them in a long barrow near the lodge. Can I just be clear? There is a bit of a lag here. So when I said nice work, John, I was saying nice work, John, for getting married a couple of times, not nice work, yes. John, for having done away with his wives. For the murder of wives. No. I think the implication is there is a few other wives as well that haven't made history <laughs> because oh. I don't think they were. But that's what the rumour is, that he had multiple wives that were multiply killed and buried in this long barrow on his estate. And now apparently the long barrow was excavated during World War Two by some overzealous GIs that were stationed at Sherborne House. They decided to crack the case of the Gloucester Bluebeard. Yeah, with with a bulldozer. Ah, that's a little bit. I'm not an archaeologist, but my understanding is that it's very small trowels and brushes rather than bulldozers. That's the American way, though, isn't it? Yeah. Bit much. Just a bit much, guys. Mm. They, They were a bit much, these American GIs. Apparently, one saw a white figure walking through the churchyard and shot at it, and no one was found, and they think that was a ghost. What? And then apparently it happened another time and they shot and they injured another GI. Yeah, but why Why shoot at it anyway? Because if, if it's a ghost, you can't hurt it. And if it's not a ghost, don't shoot it. They're just... Trigger happy is what they are. Yeah, it sounds it. Okay, so we've got the main house, Sherborne Manor. And then there's the hunting lodge. And then off the hunting lodge, there's a little gatehouse lodge. A lodge lodge? Yeah, the, the lodge of the lodge lodge. A sub lodge? Yes. In the way that a cupboard is a room within a room, mm. it sort of goes house, room, cupboard, shoebox, matchbox. <laughs> and what's smaller than a matchbox, James? Beetle. Uh, oh, a, a locket. A locket. A locket. A locket is a thing that could go in a matchbox and still contain something. Yes. And then a picture in that locket which contains memories. <laughs> So it's sort of like that, but not nothing like that. It's it's just three different size houses near each other. Yes, thank you for explaining. And in that, in 1926-27, there lived a couple who complained of ghosts. Did they now? Yes. They had a back door, which would open and close. That is convenient. By itself. Oh, by itself. Very much inconvenient. Exactly. You don't want that. Whereas we discussed on a previous episode, you want to be able to know that your house is safely locked. You do. We were the first ones to make that observation. Yes. And uh, I I really think uh, we've been proven correct. And I'm glad that we said it on a recorded medium so that idea is copyrighted. Yep, yep. It was our idea to lock doors. Copyright James Shakeshaft and ABK. Thank you. James Shakeshaft Life Hacks making a brief return. (laughs) You you said I really don't think James Shakeshaft Life Hacks have made any impression on the podcast up to this point. What? It was a. It was a real. I'm sorry. I realise I've really offended you there. I, I'm just saying that I don't think any of them have been useful. It, what, the ice one. Did I do? The, did I say the ice one? What's the ice one? Well, what you do is in your freezer when you've got your ice tray, you think oh, I'm going to need more than ten ice cubes. Just get like a little plastic tray that you get from you know when you get a takeaway. Yeah. 
get that plastic tray, pop that in the freezer. When your ice tray's ice is formed, empty all that ice into the little tray, refill your ice tray. You've got two, two ice trays worth. <sighs> What depresses me is that you weren't recognised during your lifetime. Yeah. That's what's sad about this, that you didn't receive the recognition you deserved. Yes, thanks. People like me mocked you. One of the many ways I'm like Jesus. <laughs> Jesus was there going like, what you do is, lads, you get fish and bread, okay? No, shut up, stop interrupting. It's good. <laughs> you got a lot of people coming over, okay. <laughs> You've got no booze? <laughs> The idea that Jesus presented all his parables in the style of an internet life hack video. Yeah. You want to get to the other side of that lake? You haven't got a bridge? Oh. Sort of like those internet life hack videos. If you try them yourself, none of them work. So <laughs> it's, it's kind of the same. I've just got smaller bits of bread now. <laughs> I apologise for the blasphemy, by which I mean saying that your life hacks weren't good. Thank you. Please continue with the story. Yes. So, ghosts. Backdoor with a mind of its blooming own. And then the husband of that couple... He went to the outside loo, because this is the past, this is the 20s. Yes. It was an outside loo, and when he came back, someone or thing had locked that back door. Mm. The wife would be my suspect there. Yeah. That sounds like a hilarious well, marital prank. And, well, or they've got a problem with the lock, and she didn't realise he'd gone out to the loo yep. and came down and was like, oh, the I mean, door's un- unlocked itself again. I better lock that. Yes. Get that scene too. Yeah. They didn't have Yale locks in the 1920s, though, did they? It, w- it wouldn't have just slammed shut on its own and locked. Oh, I don't know. It would have been a mortise lock, I think. Mm. So, yeah. It's, it's, so it would have required someone to someone or thing to do it. Mm-hmm. Oh, it might be one of them, a latch that didn't have an opening on the outside. Maybe. It could have been a latch, yeah. Mm. Latch technology was around in the 20s. Latches have been around since probably the earliest doors. You're listening to The Story of the Latch <laughs> with James Shakeshaft. <laughs> Life hacks and latches. <laughs> if you've had any experience with latches, please email the podcast. And if you've got a life hack about a latch... For God's sake, don't set up your own rival latch life hack podcast. That would be awful. I need to just register a domain name. <laughs> and also, this husband, another time, he saw a white stag pass through a bush without making a sound. That I really like that. That's very creepy. Mm. Like a Patronus. Is that a type of doctor? Oh, well, it's a Harry Potter thing. I mean, we're both too cool to, to know anything about that, so... I did read one of the Harry Potters. Did you? But I was already 18 by the first time the first one came out. How old are you, James? Oh. I, I've always assumed we were the same age, but then listening back to one of the episodes, you said you were had your first beer in 1996, so how old does that make you? Oh, I was 15. So you admitted to a crime on the podcast? No, you were allowed a beer with a meal in a pub. Were you in a pub? It was the Euros. Or were you standing on top of a bus shelter? <laughs> Roaring. Going... Come on, Europe. I'll take you all on. <laughs> I'm 39. That explains why you're the boss of the podcast, because yeah. you're slightly older than me. I thought you were old as time. <laughs> yes, as old as, as the trees and the wind. Yeah, you, you, you used to talk a lot about King Arthur. <laughs> so you're listening to Life Hacks, Latches and Memories. <laughs> I guess uh, as we get older, it becomes more and more of just this. Just trying to remember the order that things happened to us. Was it a Tuesday or was it a Wednesday? And so I said to Jean... um, No, it wasn't Jean. um, I'm 39, you know. (laughs) And Crump himself is seen as a ghost. He's seen drunkenly driving a coach and horses up the lane through the fancy gates. A ghost is bad news, but the last thing you want is a drunk ghost. That's like you're in Slimer territory there. Yes, yes. But he's more food. He, yeah, he's a glutton, but he's not a lush. That's a, oh, that's a lovely word. A sot. Oh, yeah. Sot is a good word, isn't it? You're listening to Words We Can Remember. Life hacks, latches, lockets and words. <laughs> As lo- the longer the list gets, the better a summary of this podcast it is. <laughs> this is costing me a lot in domain name registering. <laughs> and then there is another coach and horses ghost seen in the nearby Larkett Hill Wood. And that that coach is seen careering down a hill and round a corner. Ooh. And I think that might be the same ghostly coach and horses. Yeah, a different part of the same journey, you reckon? We know that John Dutton is drunk, so... Is this your own speculation, then? The facts of the case are being presented to me, and I'm putting them together. Brilliant. 
like a sort of ghostly jigsaw that's also a warning against drunk coaching. Yeah, you shouldn't drink and coach. No, God, no. Get a designated coachman. (laughs) Or coachman. Yeah, yeah, it's just, that is the job, isn't it? It is just a coachman, yes. So there's those ghosts. Oh, also, sorry, I forgot to mention that the lodge has a vanished room. Well, well, is this the lodge or the lodge lodge? Uh, Middle. The The, MIDI system, if you will. And what the hell is a vanished room? A vanished room is when you lay a ghost, in the olden days they would get it into a bottle or little keg of beer. Sort of like, you know, the trap in Ghostbusters, but um, more boozy. Yeah. So a bit more fun. Yeah. Um, It doesn't say how they get them in it. I guess it's probably prayer. And proton packs. Prayer or proton packs. So you get the ghost in in the vessel... And then you put that in a room, and then in order to make sure that 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 the bottle or the keg is not disturbed, you brick up the room and you know brick up all the windows, brick up all the doors and stuff, and just leave it. Find a room that you don't use very often. Oh, oh, well, yeah. Don't do it in your toilet. I live in a studio flat. This is a, this is a very this is like rich people on lockdown, sort of complaining from their swimming pools. This this solution. This this is a life hack most people can't do. Just just a room you don't need. Just brick that up. Just one of the rooms that you don't use so much. <laughs> the spare billiard room. I'll just break that up. The arrogance of the billiard. A, a room could be devoted to... Not, it's not a game room. It's specifically a billiard room. Yeah. Can we have a quick game of darts? Uh, not here. What about snooker? <laughs> Are you joking? <laughs> Sorry. Is it called a snooker room? I don't think it is. Get out. Get out of my house. Yes, you're in the right wing. <laughs> you're in the game's wing. <laughs> I feel like if I had any spare rooms, I would put up with the ghost. For the storage. I'd, ha- I'd rather have the storage space, yes. Oh, also, they had a witch in their basement as well, so they probably couldn't have used <laughs> they that couldn't either. They the basement either, because uh, there was a witch in the... You really saved that to the end. There's an unconfirmed witch in the basement. <laughs> a reported witch. And apparently a black dog knocking around that burial mound. We've done a whole episode on the ghost dogs of the Cotswolds. Yes. And I didn't mention then the snuffling beast of Lidston, <laughs> which I feel I should mention now. I actually want to do a special on that because that was a phenomena that was witnessed by some friends of mine. Uh, you've spoken with a first-hand witness to the snuffling beast. Of Lidston, yes. Of Lidston. Yes. I'll speak to the Hardings and see if I can get them on the record. <laughs> they, they might be reluctant to, to speak on tape because of uh, the fear of retribution. From Snuffle or Snuffles. <laughs> yeah, that's the story of John Crump Dutton. Very good. Although I would like to know for certain whether he was a murderer. I feel like the, the ambiguity of we don't know because some American GIs blundered in handsomely. They also say that the long barrow is still there. Is it? And it hasn't got evidence that 70 years ago someone crashed into it in a bulldozer, that that might have just been yeah. a bit of an anti-American. Oh, right. They probably just went in and handed all the skeletons nylons and chatted them up. Yeah, big time. And th- now there's like a generation of skeletons that are a bit taller and a bit bit bigger than their f- their parents. <laughs> are you saying that the, the Americans had sex with the skeletons? Yes, yes, that's what, and impregnated them. Thank you. And those skeleton American babies came to full term and were born <laughs> yeah that's so i'm saying the boomers it's not just people some of them are half skeleton yeah everyone's a bit skeleton really aren't they though yes a certain portion yes if you look if you look into it hard enough uh, there was a really weird section of the episode there yes yes it was yes very strange i think lockdown's getting to us yeah right then are you ready to score me i'm ready to score the flip out of you score me like you would a bit of cardboard that you're about to fold. <laughs> Thank you for assuming that I take the correct precautions before folding. <laughs> yeah. Category one, naming. Naming. Yes. All right. You've got you've got crump, which is a, p- an ableist slur. Definitely massively offensive. Some points for that, obviously. Yeah. What else have you got? Yeah, they really aren't. I haven't even got names for the couple that lived in the little house. Oh. You've got a Lodge Lodge. Yeah, I've got a Lodge. I like that. They've got very generic names, actually. I'm talking it down. We've got Sherborne House. That's got a name. Yeah. And then there's the Hunting Lodge. And then there's the Gate Lodge, which is even less. Mm. So we'll ignore that. And we'll go back to Sherborne. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was good. Yes, Sherborne. That's a lovely name, isn't it? Slash Burn. There's some points. Mm -hmm. Because they've cleaned it up. For the modern age. They've bowdlerized it. Yeah. What does that mean? It cleaned up. 
Baudler, I don't really know how to pronounce his name. He was the guy who went through Shakespeare's plays, taking out the good bits, taking out all the rude uh, and sexual oh. bits for uh, a prim British readership. Have they been put back in? They have been put back in. Oh, thank you. Is God. that why I hate Shakespeare? Because <laughs> all the nudity's been taken out. No, it's been put back in. Oh, thank goodness. But so sure is... Then. Well, I, I think so. I've Googled it while we were talking, mm. and I can't find any evidence that that's true. Because the government doesn't want you to know. So like sheer Ness. <laughs> Ness. <laughs> the worst of the family Ness. <laughs> Ness. Yeah. So naming then. I think it's a four. Yeah. I think it's a four for, for yeah, so a pretty half for um for Sherban and half for offensiveness. Oh, that's good. Category number two, supernatural. Supernatural. Well, you've got about 12 ghosts. A load of ghosts, just an assorted ghost menagerie. A real ragbag of spooks. Two coaches or one coach seen twice? Well, Detective Shakeshaft, I think, has cracked that case wide open yeah. or also closed the case. <laughs> the return of Detective Shakeshaft yeah, there. Yeah, ghost detective. Um, very, welcome back to the podcast, Thank Detective Shakeshaft. We had a white heart. We had a black dog. We had yep. a witch in a basement. Yes. We've got... An inconvenient door. The blueprint for the Pendolino toilet door. <laughs> I think it's a five out of five for Supernatural. Yeah, come on. I really on. think it is. Yep, I think it ticks all the boxes. Okay, my next category. Yes. Vanished rooms. No, vanished room. What? Ah, oh, damn it. Mm-hmm. Curses. Mm. Uh, I felt a very low score brewing, but... um. Vanished Room. There is one. Or is there? (laughs) I like that. That's a bit of fun Jonathan Creek business there. I've never watched Jonathan Creek. It's just counting windows. You've never watched... Stop the podcast. You've never watched Jonathan Creek. Yeah, no. What's the hook? He is a magician's assistant who is called in to solve impossible crimes. Oh. Sort of like a hard-boiled reboot of Wizbit. (laughs) Entirely no. But if that gets you to watch it, yes. <laughs> um, right, so how many points do I get for Vanished Room? Five. Yes. I'm feeling very generous. You, you've brightened my day with reminding me of Jonathan Creek and Wizbit. Cool. I thought I was going to get no points because I thought you were going to argue that there was no evidence that there was ever a room there. Oh, no. I could have I could have given you a zero. All my points turned to dust. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and I think probably the most apt category, uh, number four, lockdown fever. Yes, for this episode, this has been quite a I feverish think got episode. Very feverish. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, there's some weird stuff in this episode. Someone on Twitter said about that they listened to a, an old episode and then fell asleep whilst into it, had very odd dreams. This one, I don't know if they'll know if they've fallen asleep. <laughs> For some reason, people keep giving us that ostensible compliment. People say, oh, I love that your podcast. I listen to it when I'm falling asleep. <laughs> hey, it isn't a compliment. Stop telling me that. I, I listen to your podcast and unconsciousness seems preferable. <laughs> I choose oblivion. <laughs> In a way, we're having our revenge with this episode. This will surely infect your dreams. Yes. Start off quite innocently with some light bee chat. I'm in a chapel of bees. And then it turns into the, the sex lives of skeletons. Disgusting. Five out of five. Oh, my God. Yep. No, I, I think you've earned it. I've only dropped one point that whole round. I'm, I'm getting soft. Lockdown's really working for me. I'm getting too old for this. <laughs> getting too old for this, sure. <laughs> You've been listening to Lawmen with me, Alistair Beckett King. And me, James Shakeshaft. If you'd like to support the podcast, you can. You can buy us a coffee, spelled K-O-F-I. Mm. Mm, yeah, not a normal kind of coffee. That's ko-fi.com forward slash L-O-R-E-M-E-N. And we probably won't buy coffee with it, obviously. Mm. I can't record unless I'm eating caviar. If you don't want to give us any ear money, fine. Keep it to yourself. Sorry, that became more angry than I meant to. <laughs> Fine. Fine. Yeah, if we've offended any of the skeleton community uh, with our work there, I'm sorry if you were offended. (laughs) (laughs) Excellent. Very good non-apology there. I hate when people just say, I apologise, but they don't actually say sorry. Mm. That's... Like saying LOL and not laughing. 
You're right. Wow, I didn't realise there's going to be Shake Shaft's wisdom in this episode, too. Oh, it's got everything. Latches. <laughs> Hacks. <laughs> Words. Memories. Wisdom. Thank you, Emily O'Shea. That was your fault. <laughs> that, most of that. Please direct angry recriminations and emails to Emily O'Shea.